Welcome back to Municipal Affairs. I am Christopher Brown. We are here in Red Deer on day two of Alberta Municipalities Convention. Just on the stage behind me earlier this morning, Premier Danielle Smith spoke to delegates about her vision for the relationship and the cooperation between municipalities and the province moving forward that she hopes to work and forge in the years to come. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you to everybody here as well. I'm just so delighted to get to speak to you again at the Alberta Municipalities meeting and so glad to participate in your fall convention. I, I thought you had my cabinet on the hot seat today at 3 p.m., but Tyler tells me it's actually tomorrow. You've got a bunch of cabinet ministers anyway, so put them on the hot seat while they're here. We've got Nate Horner, our finance minister. He's the guy who makes all the financial decisions, so he'll probably be very popular today. We've got Rick McIver, our minister of municipal affairs, so please do talk to him about any of your issues. Devin Dreeshen, he's often the busiest guy because I think there is a road project or two or ten in every single community. He is here as well. We've got Cyril Turton, who is our uh, children's services minister. Mohammed Yassin, who is our Immigration and Citizenship Minister, and of course, R.J. Sigurdsson, who is our Agriculture and Irrigation Minister, as well as many private members, Scott Sear, Jackie Lo Lovely, Scott Sinclair, Garth Rosewell, Nolan Dick, Ron Weeb, and I'm sure others who are going to be trickling in so that they can spend some time with you. So, and who else is there? Oh! I see uh, Adriana Lagrange is here as well in uh, for for health. If you've got some health issues that you want to not not personal health issues, but I'm sure she'd take your feedback there too. But if you've got issues in your community, I'm sure she would love to talk to you about that. Uh, and I know Rick McIver, our Minister of Municipal Affairs, ensures that you're informed as well on government issues and you are engaged in government decision making. And he'll be updating you later on a range of topics. So I would like to thank you in advance for giving us the benefit of your advice. It does make a big difference because you understand what your residents need better than anyone. And we count on you, whether we're making policies or responding to an emergency. And we've learned from experience that our trust and confidence in you is justified. I was reminded of that during the wildfires in Jasper. The flames devastated a community that holds a special place in our hearts. But close cooperation at every level of government saved lives. And I'm grateful to all the municipalities who gave of themselves dispatching crews across the province to help rescue homes and businesses. Uh, or the many of you who also opened reception centers to give the evacuees shelter and comfort. And you worked with us to share. Yeah, thank you. And you worked with us to share information and get people home safely, and that's just how Albertans are in a crisis. We answer the call, we stay the course for as long as necessary. And there really is no better example of grace under fire than Mayor Richard Ireland and Jasper's Council. They provided effective leadership in the midst of terrible grief and shock, in some cases very personal grief and shock in the case of Mayor Ireland. And they are going to ensure that Jasper comes back stronger than ever as the community rebuilds. And Alberta's government has that same goal. So we are supporting Jasper with up to $149 million through the Disaster Recovery Program. We announced that last week. Uh, we also have been advocating uh, for them, and I see that there's a motion going through the Parliament, hopefully very quickly, to give permitting and approval authority to Jasper. They haven't had that before, so if they reach out, yeah, it's so great. I, I, I really hope that passes unanimously so they can get rolling. But as a brand new department, I know they've got a very skilled uh, CAO there in Bill Gibbon, who used to be the, the mayor of Grand Prairie, but they may be, yeah, he is, totally. But you know what, if they give you a call saying, hey, can you help us uh, figure out some processes? Can you lend a hand to help us with the permitting? They've got 410 properties that need to go through the process to get approval. We may be calling on you, if you can, to lend a hand to be able to accelerate that process. Because um, I think together we'll be ready for whatever comes in the future. P partnering with mun municipalities and between mun municipalities is really the only way to get things done. And we understand that. So close cooperation is never going to stop. 
job. After all, maintaining the Alberta advantage takes a lot of fine-tuning, attention to details, and listening to the opinions and concerns of residents and local businesses in every corner of the province. But it does pay off. Alberta is thriving. Canada's most competitive tax regime plus reductions in red tape have translated into the country's highest per capita investment. This year, private investment is expected to reach its highest level since 2015. And while venture ca yeah. And while venture capital dollars keep flowing into Alberta, even as the rest of Canada has seen a 30% decline, Alberta businesses continue to create jobs at higher rates than other Canadian provinces. There are hundreds of projects in development representing a total value of $150 billion. In fact, in the second quarter of 2024 alone, we have seen major investments in the natural gas value chain carbon capture, utilization and storage, agri-food, and I could go on. And our oil producers have a new outlet with the, co with the completion of the Trans Mountain expansion and uh, the LNG Canada and Coastal Gas Link pipeline that are soon to be in operation. Our government is backing up these business successes with solid fiscal management. We balance the budget for the third year in a row while paying down debt and growing our provincial savings. And we've brought spending into line with other large provinces. And we're doing this to protect Albertans quality of life and for the quality of life of generations to come. But it doesn't mean we have all the answers. We want to find new ways to drive growth because improvements lead to a better standard of living for everyone. And one area we are focusing on is productivity, which in a nutshell is about how efficiently an economy produces things. Unfortunately, productivity in Canada and even in Alberta has fallen behind other advanced economies. And that hurts everyone. It's a drag on public revenues, people's paychecks, and job opportunities. And it raises the cost of living. If Canada and Alberta could create higher value goods and services more efficiently, everyone's standard of living would rise to new heights. And we believe that productivity is one of the main issues that needs to be addressed in this country. And that's why, with the leadership of uh, Finance Minister Nate Horner, Alberta is taking a leadership role by sponsoring a productivity summit organized by the University of Calgary School of Public Policy. It's going to run on October 16th and 17th in Calgary and it will bring together experts from across the country and anyone with an interest to discuss the productivity challenge and possible solutions. So if you're interested, I would encourage you to register to attend and please share this information with anyone you think could contribute to this very important conversation. Of course, that potential is huge when you consider Alberta's natural resources, love of freedom and entrepreneurial culture. Many people across Canada and around the world see that too, and they're relocating here to make the most of it. The province's population rose by almost 50,000 people in the first quarter of this year, and last year, an all-time high of more than 200,000 people moved to Alberta. This record increase of newcomers has increased the province's personal income tax revenue by $458 million. And this rapid growth also comes with challenges, as we all know. These include the strain on public services and infrastructure, and we are doing everything we can to keep up. One area that is experiencing major pressure on capacity is K-12 education. Because after years of modest enrollment growth, Alberta is now adding about 33,000 students per year. That's enough to fill 35 new schools. Budget 2024 allocated $2.1 billion over three years for new school construction and modernizations to add about 35,000 new spaces. But we know we need to do more. That's why I announced the School Construction Accelerator Program last week. That's, this is a seven-year, $8.6 billion initiative that will create more than 200,000 student spaces, including 50,000 new spaces over the next three years. So we plan to build 90 new schools, modernize or replace 15 to 24 more, expand the modular classroom program, and support public char uh, charter school builds and expansions. We're adding more capacity as fast as the available workforce and approval process allow. 
There is no time to lose, given the pressure on the system. And as part of the accelerator, we've already advanced 10 priority school projects to the next stage of development, including six that are now moving on to construction. But we do need an all-hands-on-deck approach to begin construction on more projects before the end of this school year. So I am asking all municipalities to work with school boards to get sites permitted and ready. If you can prepare the sites, we will provide the dollars to get shovels in the ground. And I know that uh, Tyler has a bunch of questions about this, so we're going to have a good conversation about it. And if there are any barriers to doing that, I'm sure he will raise them in our conversation. Housing stocks, of course, as you know, are also under pressure from population growth. Absolutely everyone deserves a safe, stable, secure place to live. And we are working with public, private, and nonprofit partners to build them. To incentivize and speed up residential construction, we've cut red tape for developers, and it's working. We continue to increase our housing supply and build the homes that Albertans need at a record pace. From January to August, we have seen almost 30,000 new homes under construction, which is a 44% increase over last year. And much of that is to do with the work that you're doing at the municipal level to be able to clear away some of the red tape and move things along faster. So to help more Albertans, we're working on a housing strategy for low and middle income renters as well as prospective home buyers. That's in addition to our existing programs. Since 2019, we've invested nearly $850 million to build more than 5,100 affordable units and 900 shelter spaces. And our Stronger Foundation strategy will support 82,000 low-income households by 2031, which is an increase of 40% compared to 2021 when the strategy launched, which will also put a roof over the heads of 25,000 more households by 2031. So all told, Alberta's government with its partners will support $9 billion worth of housing investments. We are doing our best to work with you and help you, and I'm happy to say that these efforts extend to finances. Um, you, of course, you remember until 2021, interest rates on loans were based on the province's cost of borrowing. Uh, that changed, but I'm happy to announce today that the government of Alberta will be going back to that policy starting in 2025. So that means that we'll be decreasing the cost of borrowing for municipalities by up to 0.5%. Uh, and, and yeah, I, th I think it's going to make a big difference. We're doing this to reduce costs for municipalities now that we've balanced the budget and are paying down debt. Lowering the interest rate will save municipalities 7.2 million in 25-6, and we estimate it will lead to 12.1 million in savings the year after. But this change isn't limited to municipalities. All local authorities will benefit, including counties and airports and irrigation dis districts as well. Because our goal is to ensure that you can invest in services and infrastructure with out the burden of higher interest payments. I, I know that everything I've covered today amounts to an ambitious agenda, and there is so much more from healthcare to public safety to infrastructure. Fiscal discipline is what makes it possible to start thinking big, but cooperation with municipalities is what enables us to deliver, and we just couldn't manage any of this without you. We're looking to you to tell us what you need and where you need to build, and what we need to watch out for as we plan ahead. We are never going to agree on everything all of the time, but I fully appreciate that your hearts and minds are in the same place as ours. You want what's best for Albertans, and Alberta's government will always listen to you. Thanks again for being so honest and so open with us. I know that that will continue, and thank you to the Alberta municipalities for being such an effective voice for so many different local governments. It is incredibly helpful to have one go-to source to give us insights and feedback before we zero in on specific issues and troubleshoot along the way. You really do a, a tremendous amount of work, and you do it very, very well. Alberta NDP leader Nahid Nenshi also spoke on the stage behind me, and in his speech to delegates, he spoke about the bills that he would repeal if elected in three years' time in the next provincial election. And folks, I am so happy to be home. Home in two meanings. Home because many of you will know that I grew up about one kilometer away from this room. I grew up in a Red Deer that was way smaller, in a Red Deer County that was way smaller. The closest McDonald's were in Leduc and Airdrie. And now, of course, we know from the Premier that Red Deer is going to grow to a million people in a province of 10 million. Oh, no, wait, that was last month. This month, she wants to close the borders.
but this city has grown a lot. And I will say that I'm also happy to be at home with all of you, with the mayors and the councillors and a few Reeves who snuck in, with local elected officials from every part of this province. And I want to say a special thank you to Alberta municipalities for putting together a great convention this year. Let's hear it for the organizing committee. And also for inviting me. My joke is that they never let me stand on the main stage when I was the mayor of Calgary, except for the greeting for five minutes, so now I get 15 whole minutes. Took a lot to get here with you. But I didn't come alone. And I want to introduce you to my colleagues who are here with me. Our Shadow Minister of Municipal Affairs, Kyle Kazowski, is here. Where are you, Kyle? And I'll ask all of my other caucus colleagues to please stand and be recognized, ladies and gentlemen, the largest official opposition in Alberta's history. Many of them are here, and all of us are going to stick around. The convention agenda is packed, and so we won't have time to have an onstage Q&A today, but they're all going to stick around, as am I. So I am very happy to chat with anyone, to answer your questions, to talk about what could be better to understand the concerns in your municipalities, as are all of my colleagues. We are here for you. One of the reasons I'm so happy to be here with all of you today is because I continue to be inspired by the acts of leadership that we see across this province from our local elected officials. This summer was no exception. Let's point out, for example, the only mayor that Jasper has ever known, Richard Ireland. And let's talk about how Richard Let's talk about how Richard, in the face of unspeakable personal tragedy, in the, spake of, in the face of unspeakable pain for his community, stood up with compassion and with leadership and brought his community back. And he did so with remarkable public servants, remarkable public servants who work for the province of Alberta, who work for the government of Canada, and incredible public servants led by, of course, a former mayor, Bill Gibbon, the CEO of Jasper, doing the work that public servants do every single day. And for that, I am deeply, deeply grateful. A little closer to home for me, you may have heard in Calgary we had some water troubles this summer. We can talk about infrastructure funding, oh, and I will. But what I want to highlight right now is the power that it took to get Calgary through that crisis. And without the steely resolve and leadership of Mayor Jyothi Gondek, without the hard work of her council and the public servants of Calgary, we wouldn't have got there. But guess what? This week they turned the taps back on and I can flush my toilet again. That's the leadership that we see from municipal officials in this province every single day. But you don't need me to blow smoke. You know. You know that you are tremendous leaders and you do work for citizens every single day. In this room, we represent 85% of the population of Alberta. Citizens who wake up every morning under that big blue sky and dream just as big. Citizens who come together to try and make this province better, to build better lives for themselves, their families, and their communities. You know, life is tough for far too many of our neighbors. We heard a few rosy statistics today, this morning, but we all know, because we see it every single day, that too many of our neighbors are suffering. We know that Alberta has an inflation rate high above the national average. We know that Alberta's unemployment rate is the highest in the country outside of the Atlantic provinces. We know that far too many of our neighbors are struggling to make ends meet every single day, struggling to put food on the table. We know too many of our neighbors are struggling to pay their utilities bills, which have quadrupled since 2019 when the UCP came to power. We know folks are struggling to pay their auto insurance rates, which are double what they are next door in British Columbia. 
And we know that as Alberta has grown, our GDP per capita, our income per capita, has been by far, far the biggest, biggest decline of any, any jurisdiction in Canada. Canada. Our, our productivity, productivity we made for that this morning, morning, that's what productivity is, is in fact so poor that it's dragging down the national average. And we've heard over and over and over again, particularly in the last two weeks, from corporations and companies that say, I don't want to invest in Alberta anymore. We have a renewables ban that chased away anywhere between 30 and $300 billion of investment that sucked out good jobs from places like Cardston County. We have a situation where the Calgary Construction Association just last week indicated that their members don't want to bid on government work in Alberta anymore because they don't trust the government will follow through with that work. And when I said to a person from a big construction company, come on now, if there's work, you're going to bid on it. He said, look, in our company, we have a political risk register. And depending on where you fit on the political risk register, we charge you more. And Alberta is now at the top of our political risk register with war-torn places around the world because we don't think we can trust the government. That's the Alberta advantage we're living in right now. And in particular, that is something that hits local elected officials really hard. I don't need to tell you your own story, but if you'll indulge me for a minute, every single one of you in this room who is an elected official was elected in, was elected in a fair and free democratic election. Every single one of you was elected by your own neighbors because they believed in you, because you answered the call, because you didn't sit around and say, somebody's got to fix this. You stepped forward and said, that somebody is me. And by doing so, you've earned the trust of your neighbors, you've earned the trust of your communities. You are not just democratically elected officials, you are the most relevant democratically elected officials. You didn't get a party to hide behind. Your neighbors voted for you. And I think that's pretty damn special. But if you've ever seen me in the hallways at Alberta municipalities, I still want to say AUMA, but if you've ever seen me in the hallways at Alberta municipalities, you'll know that I'm always grumbling. That I'm always saying, we need to take our voice as local elected officials. We need to advocate harder for the citizens that we serve. For too long, I think, municipalities have decided to go along to get along. And for too often, governments of every stripe have pitted us against one another, have had us argue for crumbs from the table for the critical work that we do every single day. And it's never been worse. I don't need to tell any of you that. We're used to being treated with neglect by our provincial governments. But now, that neglect has turned to sheer contempt. It's not fair, it's not right, and you don't deserve it. You deserve a government that looks after municipalities and partners with you in reality, not just in words, to think about how we can build a better Alberta. And that's what I can promise you that an Alberta New Democrat government will do. Over the course of the three whole months since I've been in this new job, I've really been hesitating and making a lot of promises, making a lot of policy statements, because we're three years out from an election. I actually had a high school reunion last week. I know, 10 whole years since I graduated high school. But I ran into a bunch of friends who I haven't seen in years and years who are not politically engaged. And they were very excited and they said, Nye, we're so thrilled that you've come forward. When's the next election? And I said, three years. And they said, what? We've only had this for a year? But that is where we are. But that said, I've been hesitant to make promises. But today, I think I'm going to break the mold and I'm going to make some promises because these are easy promises. Under an Alberta New Democrat government, you will have the right to collect the taxes that are owed to you from everybody. And no industry will be shielded from paying their fair share of their property taxes. 
the government of Alberta will pay our property taxes. We will allow you to negotiate the best possible deals for your own local communities by repealing Bill 18 and trusting you to do your jobs. We will take our thumb off the scales of municipal elections and stop trying to put in people friendly to us, but let people vote for the people who best represent them by repealing the election provisions of Bill 20. Oh, and by the way, we won't cave into conspiracy theorists and cost you hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. We'll let you use the damn vote counting machines. This is the stuff that matters, folks. This is the stuff that we need to be able to do together. And I can go on, and I will go on. Under the vaunted Alberta model, people are not recovering. 40% more people are dying of drug poisoning in our province every single day than in 2019. I don't need to tell any of you that public safety, social disorder, houselessness, homelessness, and the plight of vulnerable people has become more visible in every single one of our communities. The model's not working. And we have to partner together to find local solutions that both have sympathy and empathy for the people in crisis, but also ensure that everyone in our community feels safe. That doesn't happen by randomly announcing a new Alberta Police Service sort of kind of on the stage of Alberta municipalities just before lunch. It happens by partnering with every single one of you to ensure that we are following a comprehensive strategy, not just on mental health and addiction, but also on public safety and also, excuse me, on crime and on ensuring that all of our streets end up safe and reasonable so that every single Albertan can walk down every street in Alberta and feel safe. And that also involves a significant investment in housing. Every single one of you knows that rents in the large cities have grown higher than, faster than in any other jurisdictions in Canada, that housing affordability is eroding quickly. But we have a provincial government that has been largely absent. Despite some promises around building more affordable housing, well, they haven't. Instead of a government that uh, treats itself like a pinball careening from crisis to crisis with a few billion here and a few billion there, wouldn't it be nice to have a rational, pragmatic government? A government that is focused on Alberta's priorities, not the priorities of those few people who might gather in Red Deer a few weeks from now to vote in a leadership review. Wouldn't it be nice to have a government that is competent, that is moral, that really leads us to a better Alberta? Because as you know, as I always say, it is impossible to dream small under a sky this big. You know, I wasn't sure I'd get back into politics. There was no pull. There was no thing I was really missing in my great retirement. But like so many of you, I was troubled by the future of Alberta. I was troubled by the direction of our government. And I said, somebody's got to do something. And like all of you, I realized, oh, I might know that somebody. And this is where we ended up here. So everything I've talked to you about today starts with one word. And that word is respect. Respect for all of you as elected officials. You know, you never hear me say levels of government because it's hierarchical. It's orders of government. I have always talked about the importance of local elected officials when I was out there, and I will continue to do it while I am up here. It all begins with respect. And you know, even in these tough times, even in these times of division and rancor and hatred, I like to live my life in gratitude. And so I wake up every morning and I ask myself, what's good today? And this morning, I woke up in the finest hotel room in Red Deer. It was not the finest hotel room in Red Deer. But it was really easy for me to be grateful. It was really easy for me to be grateful because I knew that I would be here today with all of you. I often use the Sanskrit word seva. Seva means service, selfless service. And I know that every one of you is here because of the big bucks. I know every one of you is here because of the never-ending adulation from your friends and neighbors, none of whom ever criticize you. I know every one of you is here because you answered the call, because you said the somebody who's got to do something is me. And I know that every one of you is here 
because you love this place, because you love your community, and you love this province. And I'm here to tell you, I am so grateful for every one of you. Help is on its way. Better is possible. But mostly today, thank you for your service. Thank you for your seva. Thank you. Also throughout the day, Alberta Municipalities President Tyler Gandam spoke to reporters answering their questions on a range of topics that the Premier had talked about and the advocacy work that the organization was doing. More than 1,000 municipal leaders from across Alberta have traveled to Red Deer for three days of information sessions, presentations, meetings, and networking. Today, we're discussing and then voting on 27 resolutions brought forward by our members on issues that matter to them and the communities that they represent. We're also hearing from Premier Daniel Smith and Alberta NDP leader Nahed Nenshi. Tomorrow, we'll hear from 15 provincial cabinet ministers and have an opportunity to ask questions. We also elect a few new board members. Let me start by saying that the Premier's announcement today is appreciated. Municipalities are always appreciative of any assistance the provincial government provides to municipalities, especially when it comes to reducing costs and supporting investment in growing communities. The reintroduction of low-cost loans from the provincial government for local governments is something AB Munis has been advocating for. There are other things we are also advocating for and our members are providing us with input on their priorities. As you'll see when you review our 27 resolutions, municipalities are dealing with a lot of interrelated issues. The resolutions reflect the complexity and challenging nature of municipal governance in 2024, made even more complex by a fractious political environment. For the next few minutes, I'll talk about several of the challenging issues featured in this year's resolutions. I'll start by talking about grants in place of taxes. This story continues to make news headlines and with good reason. The government of Alberta has the Government of Alberta has facilities and properties all over the province. Instead of paying property tax, it gives grants to the communities in which its properties are located. These grants are used to pay for the delivery of municipal services that government buildings require, such as roadways, water services, snow clearing, and emergency services, the same services residents have to pay for through their property taxes. This approach worked well until a few years ago when the provincial government gave itself a 40% cut. The costs associated with the delivery of municipal services to provincial government properties are massive and they continue to go up. We are calling on the provincial government to reverse the 40% cut in these grants so municipalities and their residents do not have to find the money to pay the difference from their own budgets. Another topic I'll touch on is vote counting machines which are also known as tabulators. Again, this issue has received considerable media coverage in the last two weeks. One of the things Bill 20, which passed in the legislature earlier this year, has done is prohibit the use of vote counting machines in municipal elections. Our members have tried to explain that the use of these machines increase the accuracy of vote counting, save money, and provide quicker election results. We are taking a science-based, rational approach to this issue. Albertans trust price scanning technology whenever they buy their groceries. In fact, most of us scan our own groceries now. We believe Albertans have the same level of confidence in vote counting machines that use similar technology to count votes quickly, effectively, and accurately. If it's good enough for business, surely it's good enough for municipalities. That's why we're calling on the government of Alberta to reverse its decision to ban vote counting machines from being used in Alberta's 2025 municipal election. We expect voters will be unhappy when they find that election results are delayed and their local government is stuck with the bill. Finally, I want to talk about provincial underfunding of municipal infrastructure. This year, you don't have to look very hard or far to find examples of crumbling infrastructure in Alberta communities. Cracked pavement, failed water mains, unsafe bridges. 
This challenge is made more difficult by the fact Alberta's population is growing rapidly. More than 200,000 people have moved to Alberta in the last year. The provincial government allocates only $722 million a year through the local government fiscal framework to municipalities across Alberta. It's a start, but another $1 billion a year of funding is needed. We believe more needs to be done to address Alberta's $30 billion and growing infrastructure deficit. We call on the Government of Alberta to allocate more LGFF funding in its 2025 provincial budget. We realize that many Albertans are frustrated and upset right now. There are so many social, economic and political factors affecting people's lives today. Combined, it seems they are causing uncivil and disrespectful behaviour. Some of that is being directed toward local elected officials and government employees. Municipalities are the order of government closest to the people, so we get it. At the same time, we know Albertans can do better. AB Muni's is committed to representing the interests of its 265 member communities and the more than 85% of Albertans who live here. We advocate on behalf of the members of Alberta's government of the day, regardless of which political party is in power. Alberta municipalities is nonpartisan. We'll continue telling the provincial government what our members need to keep their communities thriving. After the speech, we spoke to many, many delegates from across this province and asked them simple questions. What did they hear from the Premier? What did they hear from the new leader of the Alberta NDP? And what they're hoping to take away from their speeches back to their respective communities. Perfect. Uh, Mayor Grant, um, you heard the Premier speak today. Was there anything in her speech that, as the Mayor of your community, you're a little bit more optimistic heading back to your community on Friday? I've always in, uh, appreciated what our uh, um, premiers have had to say and even the opposition what they have to say. Um, I'm not sure if right at the moment it's going to be a positive or negative, but hopefully the, you know, it will be a positive. Was there anything in the speech that she should have talked about, particularly when it comes to what's going on in Vulcan or just in municipalities in general? Well, I, I think that, you know, the Premier is always trying to um, appease and, and, and work with us. And, you know, with some of the things that have gone on in, in municipal life lately, um, there's always a concern of, of whether, you know, they're taking or, or giving. And, and unfortunately, until, you know, you see it in legislation, it's, it's pretty hard to, to see what to do with it. So, and then on the flip side, Alberta NDP leader Nahid Nenshi gave his speech to delegates. Was there anything that you took away or are you optimistic that he'll have a voice in small town, small villages, communities your size of Vulcan? Um, being in rural communities, um, the NDP don't have a strong um, foothold and, and I'm not sure whether they will in the future. It, it's, it's up you know, it's three years to, to, to see what's going to happen. Um, I, I appreciate his honesty and, and upfrontness and, and, you know, coming from, uh, you know, the, a uh, municipal background that he had with the city of Calgary. It's, it's very impressive, but um, ho hopefully, um, you know, there'll be some positive things come from, you know, having an opposition is always good. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're a municipal representative or provincial or federal, you know, it's always nice to have that opposition. And finally, my last question, it's off topic about what we just talked about, but it's a simple one. What does Alberta municipalities mean to the town of Vulcan? Well, I appreciate what they do for us. I mean, it's it's nice to come to the convention uh, to uh, have, a, you know, the fellowship and, and uh, uh, learn from some of the other municipalities and find out that, you know, we're all in the same boat together. You know, we need to work together to, to move this province forward. And, you know, we, we need each and every one of us. And so, you know, I, I think this is a, an organization that um, supports that philosophy and, and tries to bring it forward. And, and, you know, I appreciate being able to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor, day two of Alberta Municipalities, Premier Daniel Smith just spoke in that room a few hours ago. Was there anything that you heard as a councillor that you were hopeful for? Uh, you know, not specifically. I think the attitude was more respectful. Uh, the the 
you know, particularly she sat down with President Ganim and they kind of had that fire fireside chat kind of uh, back and forth and so actually you know that was helpful um, so you know it, it felt like a, a more respectful dialogue um, coming maybe more as equal partners to the conversation um, so I guess that would be the most hopeful part of that. was there anything that you were hoping that she would have touched on or talked about during her speech or even the fireside uh, questionnaire that as a representative for council uh, the city of Brooks you would have been able to sort of latch on a little bit Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, th I was hoping to hear more specific details, I guess, about um, particularly the uh, infrastructure announcements for um, schools, the 8.6 billion, I think that, I believe that's the number. Um, I would like to hear a little bit more specifically about uh, the money that the province can shell out for operational costs, building playgrounds, things that uh, a municipality my size, the city of Brooks, um, those are a big cost for us and it's a um, it's definitely a factor going forward when we think about uh, building new schools and, and, and the like, yeah. Finally, on the flip side, Alberta NDP leader Nahid Nenshi gave his very first speech as leader of the party. Uh, as someone who represents your community, uh, this is a new relationship that municipalities are going to have to work with. What did you hear in today's speech? Um, you know, I heard a couple things. I think uh, Mr. Nenshi obviously has that different perspective of coming from from a, uh, a mayoral background, a municipal background, so he is uh, well versed in municipal leadership and, and, and the kinds of things that we're looking for. Um, and so I'm hoping that he'll uh, walk the talk, so to speak, and apply that, that knowledge and that, that grassroots um, activity experience that he's has been able to have with the people in this room. Um, and take that going forward and make some meaningful policy um, and and uh, rise above the fray in terms of discourse uh, and just keep it keep it respectful and and be a uh, be an example of what what discourse can look like. We had some you know we had some debates just in there with our resolutions and even though you know we disagreed, right? It was it was. It was a very respectful, thoughtful conversation. So that's what I'm hoping that um, Nahad Nenshi can, can do for, for the NDP and for the province. Councillor, um, Alberta Premier Daniel Smith gave her speech to delegates at the Alberta Municipalities Convention. As a delegate, as the Vice President of RMA, was there anything that you heard that you're taking back to RMA or even to your own community of Brazos County? Well, we definitely uh, heard a lot from her speech today. Um, and one thing uh, to take away that I think stuck out probably the most for us is um, talk about affordability and, and with housing. I know we're rural Alberta, um, but we're having those issues too. It's not, it doesn't seem to be just a big city problem anymore. Um, it's definitely affecting the rural areas. So it was good to you to hear and see some of the highlights being uh, put there. Um, another highlight that we did here today, and I, I believe there was an announcement earlier this morning too, and it's about bringing back the uh, low cost of borrowing for Minnesota so that will be a huge boost for the municipalities um, for, for both both sides of the fence, urban and rural. So, While this speech was more dedicated towards the urban counterparts, was there anything that you were hoping that the Premier would have said in this speech that would have given you a little bit more hope going back to Brazo County? I think uh, front, and, front and center for a lot of rural municipalities right now continues to be the unpaid oil and gas taxes that are on, lands, on landscape um, and some of the interesting comments um, that have been out in the media lately around that. So um, notice that that wasn't touched on. Um, and the other piece um, that continues to be an issue for us is, of course, is d disaster mitigation. Um, we just come through another wildfire season. Um, we're still not done. We're still fighting fires in the province. Um, and we would like to see a little bit more em emphasis on that, too, as well. On the flip side, Alberta NDP leader Nahid Nenshi also gave his speech today. Was there anything in there that gave you, uh, your? did your ears perk up at all during the speech? Uh, you know, a little bit. Um, there was quite a, bit, uh, quite a bit on the attack side of things. And um, I don't think uh, whether you're sitting with the urban municipalities or with the rural municipalities, it's not a tactic that I, I think we, we, uh, we appreciate. Um, we like to hear what you bring to the table, what you have to offer. So uh, one thing that uh, Nenshi did touch on was actually un paid oil and gas, uh, gas taxes, he did bring that up. So um, that was uh, a, a nice surprise and a good gesture to hear that, um, that that's on their radar too as well. So, Councillor Benjoko, thank you so much for doing this. Um, you just heard Premier Smith give her speech. You heard Alberta NDP leader uh, Nahid Nenshi give his speech. I want to start with the Premier though. Did you hear anything as a councillor that you were optimistic about when she was talking? 
I was uh, optimistic about her uh, talk regarding taxes, maybe some shift in how taxes are collected. We should maybe be collecting the taxes on behalf of the province. And then I'm looking to see if we can be able to collect our taxes on the properties that are owned by the province. So those two caught my attention this morning and I'm hoping we can uh, hold her accountable for those uh, uh, semi-promises or at least it opened those doors. So those are the two main things for me. Was there anything in the speech or was there something not in the speech that you were hoping that the Premier would have addressed? Well, uh, the issue of oil sands and the flying fly out uh, might sound like it's been uh, a, a record breaking, we've been saying it all and all, but I was hoping to be able to talk about that and I'm hoping I'll be able to talk, engage the Minister of Energy who happens to be local to Fort McMurray. Uh, she, she, uh, the Premier talked about incentivizing uh, the oil sands, maybe the workers or the industry so as to encourage localization of jobs. We want people to come from all over the world, doesn't matter, but they should spend the money, some of the money locally. They should buy their coffee in Fort McMurray. They should rent homes, rooms, whatever, and contribute to the economy and possibly pay some taxes. That would be good on what they end. So that is one topic that is hot on my plate. I want to turn to Nahid Nenshi now, the Alberta NDP leader. He did also give a speech today. Yes. Was there anything in that speech that you were optimistic about? I know uh, asking a politician to remember what another politician is hard, but was there something that you heard from him or were you even just happy to have him at the convention? I was happy that he came at all and he at least presents as an alternative and is looking at making things better in some ways uh, but most importantly what i like about having uh, the opposition leaders come is because they are also able to present some cases strongly on behalf of the residents of abada generally speaking uh, so i think uh, nancy actually stands to be a good voice to be able to not only to oppose but to bring some points and make sure that the premier does some things in favor of of, of the residents so we don't know where it's going to go <laughs> in the next uh, election but i think abada is going to be in good hands either ways from what i can see perfect councillor day two alberta municipalities you heard from premier smith you heard from alberta ndp leader nahid nenshi let's start with premier smith she came, she gave a speech. Did you hear anything in that speech or even the question and answer session that you can go away, go back to Vegreville and work on the budget this year to better represent your community? One thing that stands out for me is the acknowledgement that the interest rate on debentures that municipalities use to do all the important work that we do in infrastructure is going to return um, to the low rates that we used to have access to. It's a completely different consideration. We should not, as municipal governments, have to pay the same rate um, to loan or to borrow money from uh, major lenders. And um, that was welcome news. Happy to hear that from the Premier. Um, was there anything that you wish you would have been able to hear from the Premier? When we're talking about uh, the province collecting taxes, um, she had mused about that point. I think it's been very clear many times over the years, Alberta Municipalities has been an advocate for the school requisitions getting taken over by the province. It's an inappropriate um, job and uh, deference of blame towards local government officials that have nothing to do with school requisition and we're just the collector of something that we give away. Um, also happy to hear that uh, consideration of remitting uh, taxes at the levels that they used to for uh, GPOT, it used to be uh, grants in lieu of taxes uh, for all of the provincial uh, buildings that we all have in our communities. That's actually something that would be materially uh, helpful immediately if the province were to remit that tax to municipalities. On the flip side, Alberta NGP leader Nahid Nenshi gave his first speech to Alberta municipalities. Uh, for clarification's sake, you did run for the Alberta NDP in the last election. Did you hear anything in this speech that gave you hope that the Alberta NDP can connect with municipalities, particularly in rural municipalities like yours? Um, I uh, 
again, in my role as a councillor, I, I took a leave to run provincially in the last election, so that, of course, is uh, the colour of my pyjamas is not something that you would see all the time. Um, and so it was helpful and hopeful to be able to hear the message that uh, the leader and the NDP brought today. I think it's a strength of Alberta municipalities. They've always been able to bring the leaders of both the governing and the opposition parties to make sure that the membership is able to listen. Uh, what I hear that's hopeful there is a leader that is well-versed, understands the challenges that we have and is willing to support. So some of the things that uh, have been very problematic and troubling for municipalities, such as Bill 18, 19 and 20, uh, the specific reference to removing some of those barriers and ensuring that the autonomy and the support of the province for those autonomous governments of local government um, decisions would be there with a different government. Perfect. Uh, Councillor, you heard from Premier Smith today, you heard from Nahid Nenshi today, leader of the Alberta NDP. Let's start with uh, Premier Smith. Was there anything in that speech that, as a councillor for Leduc, that you were impressed with or happy with what she said? Absolutely. Uh, it was interesting to me to see the both, the both because they're both very powerful, effective speakers in their own right, in their own uh, style. It was, it was great to hear contrasting views from both of them. I appreciate that in the Q&A, uh, Premier Smith, she was able to admit when, uh, you know, she wasn't sure about something, uh, um, express a willingness to, uh, to engage on things that she wasn't uh, sure about. Uh, she uh, indicated, for instance, uh, grants in place of taxes, willing to have a conversation about that, uh, open to discussions on uh, the homelessness issue, but I've, I, have, I have some uh, criticism of, of what she had to say about that, but uh, all in all, like, it, was, it was interesting to, to hear the perspective, and uh, I was uh, by and large pleased with what she had to say. Was there anything that she should have said to push you over the top to make you feel like you're going home to Leduc to make yourself a little bit better friendship with the province? Sure, absolutely. So one thing that irritates me about the whole conversation about homelessness in our province is that uh, there are certain people that frame it entirely in terms of addiction and recovery and uh, as if that is the only uh, factor that, 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 that is feeding into the, 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 the epidemic that we have of people experiencing homelessness in our province. And that seemed to be what she was focused upon, uh, recovery and, and, uh, and, and wraparound services. Uh, part of the, one, one of the essential factors missing from a lot of the debate is the factor of, of shelter. And, and, uh, and, and that was really not addressed by Premier Smith. Uh, we we had a we had a we like a lot of communities in in Alberta. We have had this debate, and it was frustrating to me around our own table. I don't say this as a criticism, but as an observation, that uh, so often it was the the, the issue of uh, of shelter was glossed over, and and as though uh, people can get their their lives together without having that essential element that people need to survive it's a very it's a very bottom of the pyramid of uh, Maslow's uh, <laughs> hierarchy of needs shelter is right up there with food and water uh, and if it's, it's it's a lot to expect from people to to get their lives together when they don't know if they're going to survive the winter they're not going to freeze to death um, final question for you, and it's about Nahid Nenshi. Um, you, he, this was his first convention that he spoke at. Yes. Did you hear anything that you were impressed with what he said or that you can take back to Leduc to have a partner in the Albert NDP? Well, of course, like uh, Nahid Nenshi, one of the things that I was always wanting from him from, from during, the, uh, during the leadership race and, and, and afterwards, to a little bit more solid on, on, on policies and the things that he stood for. And he, today he came out very strong and, and made some promises that he said that he was a little hesitant to make. But he, these were the ones that he that he said uh, he felt very comfortable making, repealing Bill 18 and the electoral position uh, uh, sections of uh, Bill 20, giving us back the the power to decide for ourselves whether we want to use vote tabulating machines. Uh, not having those machines, it's going to be very expensive for us and for every municipality in the province that was using them before. It's going to be make, make it uh, uh, difficult to tabulate results and. We don't know who was asking for that. I don't know. Uh, as far as I can tell, it's it's a it, it's an unknown number of unknown people that don't have faith in those machines, and maybe they have a point. I don't know. I have faith in them. And if they live in a community uh, and and they want to advocate for, that their local government not use them, 
that should have been up to them. It shouldn't have been a blanket uh, uh, imposition on, on everyone in the province. So uh, I was always very critical of, of those uh, those uh, provisions that, that came out recently, uh, very public about that. So it was very encouraging to hear those things. And of course, he's, he's speaking all, much like Premier Smith, speaking all the right things, uh, the issues that, that are top of mind. They, they, they both have a bit of a local government background. Uh, Premier Smith was on the school board and of course, uh, Mr. Nenshi, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they know how to speak her language. So and, and so, uh, you know, both have much to recommend. I do have another question. So you're at Alberta Municipalities. Is there anything you're hoping to take away from this three-day convention here in Red Deer? Uh, yes, I am taking many things from this. That uh, how the community works, different issues and uh, uh, different uh, topics. Surely, I heard. Uh, Premier also Smith, and uh, I had worked with him, not worked with him, but she was in the Wild Rose about uh, 12, 13 years back. She came to Fort McMurray, and still uh, I have uh, long aff affiliations with her. She is doing extremely well, I hope. Uh, best of luck to her. She speaks very well, very clear about the issues, and very uh, uh, really impressed me even today after so many years. She's, she, was, she was speaking very well. Thank you. And what about Nahid Nenshi? What did you hear from him today that made you think a little bit more about what's going on in your community or what you can bring back if he is elected premier? Uh, yes, uh, Nenshi is a competent, uh, competent politician. He did very well as a, a mayor of uh, Calgary and uh, displayed very well and to even today's presentation it was very well it was well thought of and uh, good thing which i saw that he presented his shadow government and his ministers so that they have started that this tells me that they have started uh, you know planning their and home, started doing their home task how to do and uh, if they come to the power hopefully they would be doing good and this would be a good competition and uh, always there should be a good competition in the democracy so that everybody remains in running on the toes. Thank you. Uh, Justin, you are here at Alberta Municipalities as a first-term councillor. What does it mean to be at an event like this where you're meeting with other municipal leaders from across the province? Yeah, great question. I think one of the uh, the most profound things that I've discovered is that the issues that we're dealing with in the town of Sony Plain or the successes that we're having aren't unique to us. And so having the opportunity to connect with others who have similar sized communities or communities that uh, have similar challenges and experiencing similar things to what uh, we're experiencing back home uh, has been a great way to uh, uh, connect with others but also to brainstorm solutions for for those issues that we're facing together so and what do you take away from this day three-day convention I know you're only here for one day because you do have another job the life of a municipal politician but what are you taking away from this and you can bring back to Stony Plain to ensure that this is not just a waste you know I think one of the uh, the things that's been really great for the town of Sony Plain is uh, we've gone through a lot of growth over the last few years, but we've also had stability in our leadership. Uh, our CAO uh, has been in place for for a significant number of years uh, compared to the provincial average. Our, our mayor has been in place for a long time, and we're actually able to share uh, a lot of successes that we've had with others. And so, being able to go back home and uh, and celebrate those with our community that we're able to be a leader uh, in in our not just in our community, but in our province, I think is really exciting. So you picked a good day to be here. Premier Smith, Nahid Nenshi both gave their speeches today. I just want to ask from your perspective as a councillor, did you hear anything in Premier Smith's speech that made you a little bit more happier heading back to Stony Plain? You know, I, I think uh, the willingness to work together. And uh, certainly there were, were some tough questions asked uh, by our... Uh, Alberta Municipalities President uh, Mr. Gandam there, but uh, you know the Premier's willingness to to come back to the table and meet and have some of those further conversations I think is really important. I think it's, uh, it says a lot about uh, our government and their willingness to uh, meet with the issues that are uh, impacting municipalities or around the province. And now I have to ask the flip side question, did you hear anything in Nahid Nenshi's, the leader of the Alberta NDP speech, that makes you a little bit more happier heading home? Uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, Nenshi spoke a lot today about uh, mutual respect and uh, certainly 
uh, you know, there, there needs to be respect there that's in place and, and he also sees uh, the municipal government having an important role in governance and something that I think really stood out for me was the phrase orders of governance versus levels and removing the hierarchy uh, that sometimes exists in, in governance and, and kind of putting everybody on the same playing field with a common goal of uh, acting in the best interest of residents of our communities in our province. So. Uh, Mayor Joy, uh, quick question. Premier Smith gave her speech earlier this morning. Uh, as mayor of your municipality, did you hear anything from her speech or even her question and answer session that makes you a little bit more happy? Well, definitely. I definitely uh, had the opportunity to listen to some of the questions I was asked by our, our president, Mayor Ganim, and the willingness that uh, the premier said, you know, let's sit down and talk and listen to these things. Um, you know, as uh, provincially elected officials, they're not as close to the residents as we are, right? So they don't hear the issues uh, to our level. So which is nice, nice that they want to actually sit down together and said, hey, what are you hearing? How can we work together? Because we are actually... Uh, doing the best we can for the one rate payer, right, which is all Albertans. So it doesn't matter if you're provincial or municipal, we're looking after those rate payers. What about, what didn't you hear? Was there something that you were hoping to hear because we chatted yesterday and you hope, we were hoping about infrastructure funding and a little bit of collaboration. Were you upset that you didn't talk about the increased infrastructure? <laughs> <laughs> Always looking for a more increased infrastructure and just, um, you know, increasing the size of the envelope for infrastructure projects for the municipalities. But we know the, the, the kettle's only so big. So we have to look at new ways of uh, revenue sharing, just kind of um, collaborating so we're not um, repeating uh, the same kind of um, issues or, or spending the money on the same issues that uh, something that could be done better within our own municipality versus having the province take care of it. Uh, May, I was going to say Mayor, but Alberta NDP leader Nahid Nenshi was also on hand giving his speech to delegates. Did you hear anything or are you hopeful that you can have a collaborative work for, play, uh, work, uh, working relationship with the new Alberta NDP leader? Yeah, the, uh, the leader of the NDP was here uh, and definitely I understand where he's coming from because he has been the mayor of uh, Calgary for uh, quite a few, uh, for a few years before that. Uh, he, I think he understands the issues. And it sounds like uh, the NDP is willing to listen and collaborate as well. So we'll see what happens uh, to see when they lay out their, um, their kind of uh, playbooks to see uh, where we're going. Uh, definitely looking for both parties to open the, the conversation uh, that, and have us invited to the table to talk about how we're best going to address those needs, the infrastructure projects, and then make sure that we su supply those services for our residents. Councillor um, Alberta. Premier Daniel Smith gave her speech to delegates at the Alberta Municipalities Convention. As a delegate, as the Vice President of RMA, was there anything that you heard that you're taking back to RMA or even to your own community of Brazo County? Well, we definitely uh, heard a lot from her speech today. Um, and one thing uh, to take away that I think stuck out probably the most for us is um, talk about affordability and, and with housing. I know we're rural Alberta, um, but we're having those issues too. It's not, it doesn't seem to be just a big city problem anymore. Um, it's definitely affecting the rural areas. So it was good to you to hear and see some of the highlights being uh, put there. Um, another highlight that we did here today, and I, I believe there was an announcement earlier this morning too, and it's about bringing back the uh, low cost of borrowing for Minnesota. So that will be a huge boost for the municipalities um, for, for both both sides of the fence, urban and rural. So, While this speech was more dedicated towards the urban counterparts, was there anything that you were hoping that the Premier would have said in this speech that would have given you a little bit of more hope going back to Brazo County? I think uh, front, and, front and center for a lot of rural municipalities right now continues to be the unpaid oil and gas taxes that are on, lands, on landscape um, and some of the interesting comments um, that have been out in the media lately around that. So um, notice that that wasn't touched on. Um, and the other piece um, that continues to be an issue for us is, of course, is d disaster mitigation. Um, we just come through another wildfire season. Um, we're still not done. We're still fighting fires in the province, um, and we would have liked to see a little bit more em emphasis on that too as well. On the flip side, Alberta NDP leader Nahid Nenshi also gave his speech today. Was there anything in there that gave you, uh, your? did your ears perk up at all during the speech? Uh, you know, a little bit. Um, there was quite a, bit, uh, quite a bit on the attack side of things. And um, I don't think uh, whether you're sitting with the urban municipalities or with the rural municipalities, it's not a tactic that I, I think we, we, uh, we appreciate. Um, we like to hear what you bring to the table, what you have to offer. So uh, one thing that uh, Nashi did touch on was actually unpaid paid oil and gas, uh, gas taxes, he did bring that up. So um, that was uh, a, a nice surprise and a good gesture to hear that, um, that that's on their radar too as well. So Now we are back here for day three of the Alberta Municipalities Convention on Friday. And on this day, the AGM will be taking place, but also the unofficial official 
bear pit sessions will be taking place where the municipal leaders will be able to directly ask ministers in an open setting questions that are pertinent to their communities. We'll have all that coverage on Saturday morning's municipal affairs. So until then, talk to you soon.